Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one. And of course, you're gonna get the coffin skin. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Wednesday night to one and all as we are here with our AEW Dynamite Sidecast once again. Once again, thank you everybody for stopping by. Uh, always appreciate having you here. Sorry I've been off the last couple days here, you know, when it's that beginning of the month adulting, I believe is the the hip new turn for the girl for the kids these days. So, uh, yeah, had a little bit of that to do here, but uh, we're back. Uh, going to be an interesting schedule this week. Uh, ah. I, I, on behalf of everybody at Zodiac, <laughs> I will give you one of those just in honor of yourself. So, uh, so yeah, welcome to AEW here. Uh, right after this, we will have our SummerSlam PLE for WWE 2K24. I believe we're going to get Carmelo Hayes and Gunter in a cage as our main event here tonight. Barring anything stupid happening. We're also going to get JC Jane and, or sorry, uh, Becky Lynch and Cora Jade in a cage. And we'll see how it uh, pops in there. So we've got five great matches coming up tonight. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be back at Tears of the Kingdom. I'm still contemplating whether we need to uh, do one more sort of build up run. Thank you for the hydrate sub. Mitchly appreciate it. Thank you, JP Savage. You know what? Just for JP, since I did it off stream, off camera. That'll be for both of you tonight. Don't worry, I'll be going through all of it. By the way, it is uh, iced tea, so uh, no sport, no uh, no gaming uh, adrenaline bonuses tonight. So, uh, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm deciding whether we want to do one more run. Nope. Just straight good host iced tea. So not the Texas type, unfortunately. So I'm trying to decide with uh, Tears of the Kingdom whether we want to do one more build up run or just go for it. What we might even do is just do the preamble. Texas tea is oil. I will give you that. I know we had one restaurant up here, Chili's, it was called. We used to have that, uh, when you ordered an iced tea, that's what they would give you, right? Like basically hot, or sorry, cold brewed tea. First time I ordered that, and I got it. I'm like, hey, what the hell is this stuff? Oh, there yet. What the hell is that? There we go. I can just use that today. Uh, yeah, so. But no, this is going to be big. Uh, tomorrow we're doing Tears of the Kingdom Friday. I'm going to my first indie show in a year. I took a year off from the indies. I just, when you've been involved as much as I did, and then you start seeing what's there, you just need a little bit of a break, I thought. And things just kept carrying on, and I kept working Friday nights that, you know, didn't get a chance to go. But I am going this Friday. Top Talent is bringing in, they're bringing in a few people. Effie, uh, Jimmy Lloyd, I believe, is going to be there. Uh, but the main guest that they're bringing in is Donovan Dijak. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Going to be hooking up with uh, Andre and Melbo. They're going to be checking out the show as well. Um, and then Saturday we'll be here, hopefully, as long as they don't change the time again. We'll be here with Collision and Week 11 of uh, WWE 2K24 My GM Mode. So... But yeah, tonight's going to be interesting to see what we got for a card because if, you, if you've been under a rock, not on social media, whichever, apparently no flights are going in from nor to North Carolina right now. Apparently there's some storm activity out there. Um, MJF has said that he's driving in to t take on Kyle Fletcher, which, all right, good to see we got that match. Mariah Mays made it there, so she's supposed to be taking on Viva Vaughn, who uh, I do believe is from that part of the woods. 
as we're just getting ready here. We're just seconds away. Um, other than that, the car's pretty much in the... We're supposed to get Brian Danielson and Jeff Jarrett in an ODQ match. Whether they show up, who knows? But yeah, Tony Khan even went out and said that Hulu's not loading up, damn it. And there's the opening right there. So they're not even waiting. They are literally just saying, nope, we're we're gonna start with MJF and we'll figure out the rest of the card as we go. Hey Jay Quick, how you doing? So, oh, that's right. We get Callus for the first match tonight. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, results from what happened down in Mexico here last Friday. He, uh, oh God. That flag, I, I, I thought you'd get arrested for putting a flag up like that. Desecrating the, the uh, American flag. Sucks when you have to pirate a show you pay for, oh. So I think, you think Osprey interferes in this side? Uh, oh, he is there, okay. I was going to say, I don't even know if he's there, like with all the travel issues that are going on. I'd laugh if they got uh, MJF and Fletcher to go an hour or 58 minute, 59 minutes and 58 seconds. Technically, the MJF flag is against flag code, not that we enforce. Yeah. 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 I know you would know more than anybody else about that uh, Zodiac, but yeah, it's at least with the travel issues MJF, MJF made a point of it on X to said he was going to drive 10 and a half hours to get there. They're in uh, North Kakalaki right now. So makes you wonder if Kenny Omega is going to be there. Cause you know, it's supposed to be, you know, a second home to him. There was a very good point that was brought up in uh, on X. I know it's hard to believe, totally, totally unbelievable. <laughs> but uh, look at Kyle Fletcher's opponents here on Dynamite. He's at Osprey. He's at Danielson. He's now got MJF. He's basically had every. He's got a whole bunch of top talents. I love how MJF is trying to, you know, he's always got to get a mic to start his night off, right? So he wants a lockup, but there's a boot. Yep, I knew that was coming. Could you imagine just gave that small package to work there? And yes, I know that's a statement that could be used in many respects there. I'm not I'm not saying a word about Alicia Tude in that comment because you know I might get suspended. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just way too easy. Sorry guys. But uh yeah, if if you haven't heard the whole uh the whole basically what the things the the Britt Baker suspension we were talking about last week. It's basically broken it down to Britt didn't like the uh, the match and didn't like the hour match, which as a woman in that locker room, I could almost understand it for the fact that, you know, you got another match coming. Why do you need an hour to start for this feud 
when you could have a couple women's matches on there. And then Alicia Tude is in the locker room. She texts MJF about it. Then MJF comes in to call out Britt about it. And apparently MJF punched a wall after the meeting, not during. So that's why MJF didn't get anything other than probably a repair bill from the building. I could sort of understand where things get get hairy like that, but it also wouldn't surprise you to see Britt on this card tonight, just for the fact that not everybody gets along, right? It just any workplaces like that. I'm sure you got some coworkers that you can't stand. Look at that uh look at that broadcast table. Surprised that Tony suspended his people. The thing is it's not Tony. It's there's a committee now. There's a group of people, including lawyers, that are there talking about this stuff. And Danielson is sort of the wrestler representative on that group. And I, I could see them suspending Brit two weeks on TV, which could be, you know, a big thing. But I don't think it's going to change much of anything else. Hell, I, I think the fact that. If you didn't see on X as well, Britt's been cast as uh, for the final season of Cobra Kai. So it guaranteed she's going to get the spotlight because they're going to want to hype that up on both ends. Think Britt wins the title? Maybe. Think they're trying to prevent the drama they had in the past before. It might be draconic due to the damage they suffered in the past, but it's... Uh, Absolutely. Like, get ahead of this before you get get it out of control here. Vic, how you doing here, Vic? How you doing? Once again, everybody, as everybody's piling in here, I, I'm not usually huge on, you know, just random shoutouts, but this one's important to me. Make sure you check out Vic here at HPC Bad Guys if you aren't following him already. Thursday night, talk about all about wrestling on their channel. And they've been starting Universal here. I, I like the fact you guys are using uh, Restream there for it, so. Sure, MGF was told not to say anything about it, because you know he would have already, if he was allowed to. Played some college, you want? Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I'm actually thinking about it. I'm really considering downloading it. Except for the fact that I don't have any room on my hard drive on my, uh, on my Xbox right now because I got a couple things lined up on there. Just for the Rhea Ripley skin. Nothing else. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Get out there and beat the living crap out of people with Rhea Ripley. I would love that. I think they told me top. Who knows? MGF's got enough heat on him. He doesn't need to go down that one right now. Because let's face it, like, in, in many ways... In many ways, you could talk about MJF versus Will Ospreay being the de facto, the de facto match of the main event of All In, right? Yes, Danielson and Strickland's going to be amazing, but the buildup towards MJF and Osprey, this has been, this is another level where they're going already four levels up. SummerSlam was amazing. Yeah, I, I I'm. I'm going to throw a hot take out here. Feel free. Feel free to argue on this one. I'm more excited for what I saw yesterday, or sorry, two days ago on Raw on Monday, than it was at SummerSlam. The matches for SummerSlam were great. Don't get me wrong. The wrestlers there are fantastic. But it almost felt like everything we sort of expected to happen did. And there wasn't anything uh, really out of the ordinary. Oh, of course. You, I forgot you were there. Sorry, Jay Quick. And I bet you the atmosphere was absolutely electric there. I, I'm sorry to crap on your campaign there, Jay Quick. I just brain farted about the fact you were, you were talking about being there. Yeah, the atmosphere had to be... Ele I, I love everything about it. I, I love the... I love the show. I just, 
when you look at what happened on Monday with everything that sailed out there, the final formation of that turn where Rhea and uh, Damien are now sort of uh, the terror twins, as they call them. The, the Bronson Reed absolute destruction of Seth Rollins out of nowhere, really. That made him at that moment. Odyssey Jones showing up as part of the New Day and starting to plant the seeds of maybe a feud between Kofi and Woods. Just slightly here. And the fact that we're going to get Orton and Gunther in Germany. Which I will still say right now. Oh, by the way. Fletcher go for the uh, dive to the outside there. Got to get that in. But yeah, like SummerSlam was great. Don't get me wrong. It, it was well worth just hanging out. I was watching the uh, Elks game at the same time as I was watching uh, SummerSlam. So the local Canadian football team that finally scored a win for the first time this year. And then... Uh, but yeah, looking at everything, like wrestling all over the place, you just. Wrestling everywhere is just on such a roll right now. AEW's cooking. WWE's cooking. Like here, here's another hot take, and this comes into another story that's come down this week. Probably the biggest bad news coming out of AEW is the fact that the Lucha Brothers won't be signing to to AEW when their contracts expire and they expect to be going to the main roster right away in WWE. Now, my take is, while they are absolutely phenomenal talents, including, you know, Phoenix, who, as we always say, all the titles, I, I don't think it... I don't think AEW is going to miss them as much as people think they are. It's going to be a next man up story. And even with the tag division not being booked as well as it should be right now. I, I do feel that. Uh, I'll miss him. Well, Phoenix Penta is good, but like Phoenix. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like. Sorry, I knocked the earbud right out of my ear. Um, Penta, Penta's more story, I, I, I find. And that's really hard to say for a luchador. Penta's more of a story guy while Phoenix... You know, we can speculate exactly where they're going to go with all this stuff. And I, I really do wish the best for it. But do you blame anybody if somebody wants to order you a dub truck of money to come work for you? Do you really blame them? No. Uh, I, I thought we might almost get an upset here. No blame, no hate. Yeah, no. And, and that's what wrestling fans are going to have to learn to deal with here. Like, all this comparison back and forth is not going to be worth anything. It's the fact that both if you can get, well, in North America right now, I would say we almost have four promotions right now that are that are humming. That are humming really solid. That'll prov provide work for people. You got the AEW brand, which I include with ROH and whatnot. You got the WWE brand, which includes NXT. You got TNA. And you got MLW as well. Like, don't, don't forget about MLW. They may not be the most well-known product, but at the same time, they're producing a hell of a lot of good content out there. But Jay Quick, to answer your question there, yeah, he's been meeting a lot with the, uh, with the AW president, David Zaslav. Like, they've been, it, it, it's been happening quite a bit lately. Yeah, Kyle's arm is sort of dead at this point.
And frankly, I'm just looking forward to see if... You using the page turner? Or the Rampage, sorry, that's what it's called, Rampage. The old WWE name for uh, Soraya's finisher. Her old finisher, at least. I don't think she has a new finisher because she hasn't won anything in forever. <laughs> but, uh... Now, with the fact that they, they just announced a new show on TNT, uh, TNT Overdrive, which is supposed to be like an extreme sports show... Uh, immediately following collision using a lot of the the uh, personalities in AEW we'll have to wait and see how it debuts but if that's the case then of course they're not going anywhere and I think people need to stop getting on the who's better bandwagon and just watch what's good I think that's a North American mentality that we have that just drives a lot of people nuts. Like, who needs to be better? Who cares? If they're all good, who cares? Plus, the new show might mean a deal. Yeah, exa that's what exactly I mean there. Like, that deal is pretty close to being done already. Like, I honestly feel they're waiting for Wembley to announce the DV deal. It's the Miller Life commercial of life. It's both. It's both. Exactly. Well, I owe you that one, Vic. Sorry. No, uh, I, I think that. So do you think it'll be a hybrid deal? Uh, I think it'll all depend on what. If, uh, if Warner Brothers is willing to pay the money to take all the take the VOD library, then I think it's going to be a full deal. But other than that, but the only thing that sucks about it overall is that uh, yeah, this is a fun little sequence of these guys. Sorry, I keep talking about the deal, and we got a hell of a match going on here. The story that... We'll, we'll get back to the deal here in a minute, Jay Quick. I think we should, you know, transition a little bit into this match, paid a little bit of duty here. With the fact that Fletcher is absolutely showing off once again. Like we were saying earlier, like, all of Fletcher's singles matches on Dynamite, there's been no... There's been no jobbers involved, I think it's a bit... Well, sorry, Dustin, if you're watching this, but... There's no enhancement talent involved. It's all just great. At, yeah. Here's a question for you, chat. Will Fletcher be a world champion one day? Oh, MJF slipped. Oh, he was going for the brain buster. Maybe three years. I think it's going to be a little longer than that. But yeah, I... Uh-oh. I think there's a long line for that heavyweight. That's that's exactly what I think. I think it's going to be longer, but I, I do think there's potential for it to happen. Whoa. We almost got that three count there, kids. Now Callus is get. Oh, God. Well, this is how Fletcher loses the match, right? Callus gets involved. Him and that damn screwdriver. Problem with me at work is I could never find. 
I can never find a screwdriver. That should have been the three count. Yeah, possibly. Here's a low blow. Because Callus is distracting the referee. And he's going to beat him with a kangaroo kick. Uh, let me get to it a sec here. He's still using Adam Cole's Brain Buster as a finisher. Can you just, um, like... Ugh. So is this Cal's family over soon? Well, I think this might be part of it. I think it's all dependent on when Mark Davis is available. Because I could see Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis coming back, hooking up with MJF. Getting the Empire back together. Oh, MJ. Oh, God. He knocked out Paul Turner. Now he's got the ring in his hand. All right. Well, this means we don't have to see MJF till all in because he'll be suspended. Now, if you guys didn't see on X earlier today, Anthony Bowens asked, answered a very important question we've been asking here in chat for months, and it sort of deals with this right now. In order for you to get your music played in AEW to get out there, you actually have to run by, and there's some sensors in your sneakers that set off your music. So once your sneakers pass by the certain section, it just lights up your music automatically so you can run out there. Ugh. It, hey, don't... It, it's not me. Check out Bowen's official on X. I reposted it earlier today. So in order to come out there, they actually have to... Because what happened, I guess, there was going to be a prank... And uh, Caster tried to grab. Oh, and Osprey looks like he didn't go by the ring, by the ring backstage. He just came out the side. Oh, and of course Osprey's wearing a white shirt. So they had the real life Titan Trot Edge? Absolutely. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a war at all in. The look on Osprey's face right now. And it, oh, they are going to get that main event with Jared and Danielson. Could see them doing a gimmick. I don't think they need to. That's the thing about AEW. They don't need to do these gimmicks. They, uh... They just have a leniency in the rules sometimes, and they just don't need to say it. They just show a good presentation. And that's the one thing I like about AEW. Like... I, I think, in a way, one of the biggest differences between WWE and AEW is WWE has a tendency sometimes to 
over-regulate itself with the fact that they have to call these DQs, they have to call these countouts so hard. Everybody who watches AEW, good, bad, or otherwise, realizes they don't follow the rules as tightly as as they, they do in, in WWE. And it, it just makes things better when you do it that way, right? And Jay Quick, you were asking earlier, the pay-per-view in January, is it a New Japan? You know how Forbidden Door was an AEW show featuring New Japan? Well, January 5th at the, uh, at the Tokyo Dome, it's basically the same thing except New Japan's hosting it. So that that's the best way to explain it. To pick it up, I would have think they would try to put uh, put it on like fight or all the regular pay per view gimmicks, but it very well could be uh, it could be just on New Japan World. So a second Forbidden Door, basically, basically the same thing, except it's being run by New Japan Pro Wrestling instead of AEW. Which is going to be strange this year. I got to I got to look at the calendar here because I assume we're going to get. Let me check here. January fifth is Sunday, so it almost works out perfect for them. The Collision roster for the night before is going to be a little less. But realistically, if you look at the size of the roster of AEW, there are plenty of wrestlers that are going to be available for that. So, Is Honor Club still running? Absolutely. I have it going next week. Uh, or t Tomorrow's show has actually got the Infantry taking on uh, the Undisputed Kingdom for the Tag Team Championships. Uh, Rachel Ellering scheduled to be in action. That's what they've announced so far. I know the Dark Order and the uh, Road Von Erich uh, combination are vying over the uh, six-man titles. Viva's not getting anything in here. Jesus. But yeah, I still have Honor Club. It still runs every week at 5 o'clock. I, I implore you guys. Guys and girls, everybody that's in here. Even if you just sit it and forget it. The cost of Honor Club for the three pay-per-views they put on there a year. Or four pay-per-views, sorry. For the four pay-per-views they put on there a year, it's the same cost as if you bought four regular pay-per-views. I think I paid, and this is Canadian, I think I paid 10 bucks. Seven or 10 bucks, one or the other. I literally run through it. Uh, it runs through my Roku TV, so it's like, so I make sure I get the Canadian funds out of it. It seems using the Roku actually saves me a little money. Hey, Dodger Baseball, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're once again checking a little AW Dynamite here. It's the first picture in picture here. I'm doing good. It's been a crazy couple days here. Uh, last night, I actually off stream here. I was watching a few, uh, watching a few streamers on Twitch just lurking in the background there, and I was. Uh, just grind out little tears yesterday trying to get everything loaded up. Just back from San Diego. How was the trip? How was Cissé? I think you said you were going to be able to see him uh, work this weekend. So There's been a lot of people out here going to events. You got Jay Quick going to SummerSlam. You got Dodger Baseball going out to ye old uh, Petco. Me, I'm going to an independent wrestling show for the first time in a year, so that should be a small miracle in itself. 
get my lardy out of here. Was tiring? Yeah, I could just imagine. It's one thing a lot of people don't realize is going out to these big events really takes a lot out of you if you're not used to it, right? Because you got to be used to that grind of going out. So in your opinion, Mike, you think we'll get a TV deal announced at Wembley? Absolutely. I think that's where they're going to announce it. They're going to have 50,000 people out there. I think for the fact that if people are going to book for a show they're, or to watch a show, there's so much of an advantage to, to that show. We're going to get... It, it's, what, 1 o'clock in the afternoon uh, Eastern time, so it's in the morning here. Like, we're going to be done by 2 o'clock. It's on a Sunday. It's the week before baseball season. Yeah, see, you're the same thing. SummerSlam was exhausting. It took me two days to fully recover. Yeah, like... when it, It's almost like you have to take a vacation from your vacation a lot. But the experiences are worth it. That's the big thing. The experiences are absolutely worth it. Um... Going back to my point about earlier, we were talking. Hey, KJ, just I'm coming up with thoughts, and all of a sudden, KJ stops in just a railroad. I'm just perfectly in time. <laughs> How you doing, KJ? Hope your day's going well. You have a fantasy football draft during the P. You got a fantasy football draft during All In? What the hell is that? I'll just throw that out there for you. Oh, fantastic. After the Jays win last night. Absolutely. I, I like all I can say is where the hell were the these Jays? Like a month ago, two months ago. Like seriously, like even tonight I was watching the the Jays game before before we turned on stream tonight and hell the the Jays ended up going down two nothing in the in the first inning then all of a sudden two innings later they're already up three two it's like it's almost like a qual pre-qualification just to be down a couple runs just to make it even oh that hip attack not even gonna lie to you at the third inning I was like oh I don't think I've stayed the whole time hey I don't blame you But you know why you go on a Tuesday? The most important reason you go on a Tuesday, it's Toonie Dog Night. Well, Viva's dead. Yeah, I wouldn't have done a fantasy football trick all in. <laughs> Would you just put a hand on her and finish it? Jesus. Mariah's absolutely destroying Viva Vaughn here. I'm assuming Tony's going to be... Oh, God. She had three finishers done already and just had to use all three of them. Just making sure the star score goes up, right? But at least it'll be early on a Sunday, yeah. Yeah, like we're going to be out of there, what? Five o'clock Eastern latest, probably. But yeah, for the record, we are going to have multiple guests on here. I do have to n confirm on the fourth. I haven't talked to him yet. We'll see. I was actually going to invite everybody who's been on once already. So I know uh, Zodiac, you said you wanted to be in. Uh, McG said he'd be in. KJ, I know you were interested. I got one more to... Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, I am working on. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, the all-in stream I'm talking about. Oh, and there's the response. And if they announce a max deal, you know how many people swarm to that if they announce it? It went. That's exactly it. You get you make announcements like that when you have the biggest Biggest number of eyes on you. 
Now, this whole thing I told you about MJF and uh, MJF and Osprey being the biggest uh, feud going into Wembley. May I scratch that and put this one in there? Like if if Tony Khan wasn't such a traditionalist, I think is the best way to put it. Politely po politically correct term for this one. I'm just uh, uh oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I would think this might actually be our main event. Two people from England. Well, one one was a majorly on. Tony Storm is the equivalent of Gunther being from Germany. Let's put it that way. He, she basically forged her career in England. So I'll forget. Um, I gotta forget WWE for making that mistake. I will. I made the same mistake here. So, like I said, everything's in balance. There's so just yeah. They are really in top gear for getting this pay per view put together. <laughs> they're trying to put over the uh, Darby Jack Perry match and this crowd's just going nuts is this the best feud in AEW women's history I think you, well chat you feel free to add it in there but I think you'd have to say yes by the way good to see you here Jagger once again appreciate you um they just haven't given enough time to the AEW women's division to for period Britain Rosa is up there but this one has been developed over a year that's the thing the Thunder Rosa Britt Baker while it was intense and it ended up in a steel cage right or that lights out match sorry that that's how that ended there on St. Patrick's Day there when Thunder Rosa won the title. Uh, I think ultimately how the payoff will determine. Yeah, exactly. Like, the other news that came down this week is apparently Mina Shirakawa is heading stateside since she's not going to be involved in the uh, stardom five-star tournament, their, their ultimate, uh, their, their equivalent to the G1. Uh, Mina said she's going to be coming stateside to work on some things. Maybe she shows up at Wembley. And that's how we have this story end here with maybe Mariah wins thanks to shenanigans from Mina. I'm thinking that might, that might be a way to go here. But yeah, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to determine whether Britt and, Ro Britt and Rosa or Tony and... Uh, Mariah would be the biggest feud ever, right? Did, did your Jack Perry promo cut to a Taco Bell commercial too? No, uh, we didn't get... I didn't get a Taco Bell commercial here, sorry. I, I would have I laughed. TSN sucks. <laughs> I just... I, if I had... TSN sucks. Uh, we're waiting. We're waiting until January. We're probably going to get moved over to sports. Then it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to watch because they have a dedicated channel for all their wrestling stuff. So, uh, yeah, I just put that there with that, but no, uh, what a, once again, everybody, like I said, we're jam packed to the gills here full of people. I appreciate all of you being here tonight. I didn't want to, uh, do want to remind everybody that, well, here's the thing, uh, KJ. About a month and a half ago, um, you had Warner Brothers sign a contract with Sportsnet to take all their dedicated coverage of uh, all sports-related activities, moving over to Sportsnet on a more permanent basis. Now with uh, the NBA seemingly leaving uh, Warner Brothers next year to join that new conglomerate, including Amazon, which, hell, we might even be able to do watch-alongs of uh, 
a basketball hero. Who knows? Uh, it, it appears that AEW might be moving off uh, TSN onto Sportsnet as of January when uh, the the other deal with, uh, with WWE runs out with Sportsnet as they move over to to netflix so basically i'm doing the uh could figure the board all over the place right if hater comes back on brit's side then eventually turns on brit the britter face hater feud would be yeah as long as they can play it out properly if they give it the patience that they need like that's the, i think that might be the biggest thing here I love this. Darby's like, yeah, you j just make sure you show up for the show. Oh, Brian Keith's got a new graphic. I love it. But yeah, it, it all comes down to storytelling. It all, if, if they're going to tell storytelling in a good order and more often, more often than not with AEW, the one thing you can give them credit for is when they hit a story that's going to take a while to finish they will go through a story that will with a long payoff we'll see we'll see it through and we'll have a great one damn it not you too jaeger not you too not you too what the hell is that we already got one of those here in the chat do we have another now I'm going to have to come up with one of those on a plus Jericho on commentary. What the hell is that? Let me just throw that there. And then they talk about, you know, no stars being developed here. Like, hell, look at Brian Keith and see out of nowhere. Like, a month before he got signed by AEW, he was up here in Edmonton with top talent. It's the same promotion that I'm working with, or I'm not working with, I'm going to on Friday here, so. I, I know I used this a couple times, but this is the official one. What the hell is that? Since Jericho's here. So now you got to have Joe and Taz on the same commentary table. Or did they remove Taz already? Wait, Jericho's letting others take the stage? I know, it's just... Oh, so they kicked Taz out. Okay, that makes sense. No, they'll what they'll do is they'll have uh, Shibata will get the win, and all of a sudden, uh, Big Bill and Jericho will show up, and as usual, just try to screw things up for everybody here. He's supposed to be a biased announcer. Well, that's what he well. That's what you are, like. My guy, Keith, absolutely. Like, if you want to talk about stars being made by AEW, just coming on the roster. Oh, God. I, I can see Meltzer is brought up tonight. That's great. I, I love how Meltzer tries to defend his uh, his rankings while also making a ton of sense. Shibata sh went out and looked for Jericho right when he came up. 
I, I unfortunately that's one of those uh one of those face things right you never look for you never look for the obvious thing it's under the category of things that make the faces look dumb I almost feel like I should do a top 10 of those like I begin the hankering I just haven't had the time to do up some you know, you know those top 10 videos and whatnot just trying to expand the YouTube channel a little bit with some personalized content Which, by the way, folks, if you are looking for more YouTube content, don't forget about our wrestling YouTube channel. We got a lot of lot of podcasts on there, and Okada cut Jericho's mic. Where is it here? I'll let this all play out. That's the appropriate way. As we hit our picture picture here. I will admit when I'm talking, sometimes I don't get to hear every, all the commentary that's going on throughout the match. Just, you know, hearing, talking, got one butt in my ear here. As we uh, move, move along here, sometimes it gets a little tough to get catch up on stuff like that. But thank you for bringing that up. We got, oh, Strickland's going to sit down with Jim Ross. So hopefully we can, uh, that's probably going to be put up before the main event here tonight, which I'm assuming is Danielson Jarrett. Oh my God. They're doing Camille. They're giving Camille the Braun treatment. Or the Wardlow treatment, I guess, is the equivalent in AEW here. So do we get Jericho versus Shibata at Wembley? I don't know. I think we still get... Uh, I personally feel we still get Hook versus Jericho. We still got, what, two weeks to set that up? We know we're going to get Jericho on our TV. Jericho has to be on the show. He's Chris Jericho. Like, come on now. I think either this week or next week we get we get Hook showing up because he's had enough of this BS. If he's coming back, like once again, that's another one of those Willie Wony Willie Wony Willie Wony. Because we really don't know either way, right? Like he's another one of those that the contract's running out. Nobody knows really what's going on. Joe, we knew, wasn't going to be around because he was going to film season two of uh, Twisted Metal. Thank God that got a second season because I still haven't seen the first and I am dying to watch it. Remember, I'm the guy that actually likes really bad video game movies. Like, with all due respect, everybody calls Street Fighter the movie real cheesy. I loved it. DOA, Dead or Alive, I loved it. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, both of them, I loved them. And Twisted Metal, I'm sure, is going to be somewhat in a similar boat. I, I think the uh, addition of Borderlands, the way that it's come around, as well as I think The Last of Us is going to be the common layer of what makes a good video game TV show or movie or whatever. From the actual physical side, like uh, the the real life adaptations. As we're coming back from commercial and it's perfect. The ad break is gone just as. Uh, really like that follow show. Yeah, like. I've, I've heard the critical acclaim for the fallout show and of course, The Last of Us winning as many awards as it has. So I want to see if he actually hooks in the uh, claw 
Because he's supposed to have learned the uh, claw from uh, from the Von Erichs on one rampage there. So, so they're going to be in Norfolk, Virginia next week. What the hell is that? You're a good guy, Zodiac, so I'll just cut it in half there for that. You're not allowed to do stuff like that late. Come on now. Yeah, they're in Hangman Country next week, so... I've seen a lot of buzz, and what do you guys think of this? After what happened... I will just leave that there, so yeah, yeah. I'm not taking the bait tonight. Not, not tonight. Gotta add some more sounds to the board before I do doing that. Um, what do you think of this chat? Hangman Page versus Jeff Jarrett at, at Wembley. I know that there was a little scuttlebutt online about it, but it does make a lot of... Oh, there it is. Oh, that is a sweet transition. As the camera likes to go. Oh, and here comes Big Bill. Yep, we weren't even going to wait a minute. The gangman interferes in the Jarrett match tonight. Very well could be. Because I honestly feel they need to develop a heel for that main event. I know I know AEW isn't really worried about faces and heels when it comes to title matches. They just want the best wrestlers. <laughs> He's waiting too long. Yep, there it is. Told ya. He got his wrestling boots on so he could get the censored off and going ape on Jericho too. Here's my prediction as we go forward on this. Jericho loses the hook. But Taz ends up being in the corner of uh, Hook by the end of it. Because Jericho tries to pull some stupid stuff with, with the family there. With the learning tree. Oh no, this is going to milk the next 30 seconds of time here. Oh, it's a hurricane. Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Dun, 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 dun. Local boys. <laughs> Could you imagine? Wait a second. They're in North Carolina. They got local boys. With, with all due respect, the two, uh, the two brothers that are no longer in AEW are... Uh, they're free agents. Who says they don't come in for one night? Just one night. Just one night. 
See, Taz was the one who let Hook in the building. I, I got a feeling he was there the whole time. That's all. But no, uh, thank you everybody for stopping by here. I, I was, oh, that's right. That's right. Trevor Lee put on his ex saying he he took a took a picture of him lying back against uh, against his car, saying he could make it as well, just like MJF. Oh my goodness. Could we see that? Um, I I popped the sh shit out of myself that happened. Damn. Uh, quick thing I wanted to let you guys know about uh, from now until uh, you got two weeks. So did they announce who couldn't make it? Uh, they said. Uh, yeah, Jr. Well, I'll get to you in a sec, Vic here. Um, they did not announce, but they did confirm that, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Ishii aren't here. Cause they were, well, I know Ishii was in Texas last Saturday, so he was probably going to fly in regardless. So yeah, they haven't confirmed who's coming in. This is the only match so far that's been changed, which was never announced in the first place. So it might not have been changed. JR has been through a lot. Yeah. Like. For all the cancer he's been through, I don't mind him popping in for really important moments. I would love to see him come in just for, a, even if he has to do these special interviews or whatnot, I would love to just see him do that as a, as what he does going forward here. Cause he doesn't need to be behind the, behind the mic constantly. And he even calls it right now that he's not as good as he once was, but he, but he could be good once as he ever was. Shout out to anybody who gets that reference, but. Oh, back to what I was saying. I, I was in the middle of a cheap plug when you guys put those comments in there. I thought I'd better answer them there. Just a reminder, you got two weeks from today. Uh, you, for the next two weeks, if you subscribe to any channel, whether it be your sub, whether it be a gift sub, whether it be... I believe Prime subs qualify as well, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's just regular and gifted. You get three free months of Apple TV just for s subscribing to somebody's channel. You get a free down free code for it. So uh, don't forget that. Uh, whether you do my channel, whether you do somebody else's channel, I want to make sure you guys get some free TV. So yeah, Tony Khan announced all the matches that were advertised, all the people... Yeah, so we're doing stuff that wasn't announced, so. Here it comes, chat. Ooh. So the two people that denied him, Jarrett and Danielson, this makes, Jay Quick, you're brilliant on this. This makes it very easy to understand. For the fact that we're going to get those guys You try. I'll give you a mushroom up for that. Yeah, Jr. Just I, I, I can appreciate him in this role. This is pretty damn awesome here. Just well, well, see a JR just actually be in 100%, at least a decent shape here. Yeah, 
Wow, that sounds like Bronson Reed on on Monday. I think a lot of people aren't talking about this match, period. Yeah. I, I really do hate yeah nobody's really talking about this match and the thing I hate about this match is the stipulation they put in it last week and I know KJ you were ta you were agreeing about this the fact that they put the if I don't win I'll retire stipulation in there for Danielson and the fact that they're already advertising Danielson at other events Yeah, it might be my least favorite stipulation. Yeah, like it's it's almost why I'm I'm even uh, hesitant. Even when we do two K twenty four, if you do a if you do an ambulance match in the uh, in the stipulation, it specifically states if you do not uh, the loser of the ambulance match is removed from your promotion. Period. So unless you have a fixed card and you want to make sure that one of them's there. Like hell, I'd even use one of those tonight if I could, but I don't know if I really want to lose anybody. It's way overused and we're left rolling our eyes. Because yeah, it's almost like... Just like when they announced Loser Leaves Town or Brand, yeah. Like, the only person that's actually stuck with it for any substantial amount of time would be Cody Rhodes. Full credit to Cody Rhodes where he said he was never going to challenge for the title again. He didn't. You know they'll show up with the other brand. Yeah, like... You got to remember, when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to... It's the same one that... Uh, they had, they had the golden opportunity when CM Punk quit with the title. And he literally showed up three weeks later back on, on the show. What's he wearing? He's covered something up. Oh. The other local guys. Do you remember this whole uh, ha! <laughs> And of course Dax has the hitman glasses that that sort of checks out I'm actually surprised that uh I'm surprised Cash does have the Neidhart uh, circular glasses. This is sort of, uh, what, what's the phrase we're looking for? Some of the most obvious answers are the, uh, are the best ones. Oh, yeah, what about Briscoe? Yeah, they're an FTR country, yeah. It makes sense, right? And, of course, the uh, Undisputed Kingdom have to come out with chairs.
David's trying to find some rhythm with the drums while, uh, while Bennett's there playing the guitar. Sorry, I blanked on Bennett's name for about three seconds there. I'm like, what the hell? But yeah, th this fix, you know. I could imagine them wanting a rematch and all of a sudden Mortos gets another pin. That would actually be pretty dope. So did they actually move the guy with crutches just to sit down? I know they brought out chairs, but seriously. Uh, good old Callus. We get him twice a night here. So have you guys picked up any of these special figures from AEW? I know I still have the original uh, AEW entrance with the two tunnels and like the old school two tunnels and the four... It's still in the box. I actually picked it up for a buddy of mine. I just didn't get to see him at all during the panic pandemic. Well, if you couldn't have Ishii or O'Reilly, I guess the next best thing. Yeah, I guess it would have been Briscoe, not uh, O'Reilly, but still. But yeah, getting FTR out here at home. That was part of the... Uh, Commentary that was coming up with the acclaim like they were supposed to show up on Saturday. Now, do the acclaimed actually show up tonight? That could actually, you know, play into things here a little bit because the acclaim claimed that they would just show up and deal with deal with FTR on their own turf if they don't want to come to theirs. Which I do understand they said they were going to collision on Saturday, but I digress. This is a very interesting tag team. <laughs> oh my god. I think that's the biggest level of cockiness I've seen out of orange in a while there wagging around his pockets like that please don't oh ew if I was the three opponents I'd be like now nah, I gotta touch those hands ew Get him some wet wipe or something. Anyway. You do have to admit, it has been a pretty entertaining night of action so far here. We're about an hour 10 into it. For those that are just popping in here uh, early, welcome. Who didn't get a chance to check out things earlier. Had a hell of a match between Kyle Fletcher and MJF to start off the show. NJF eventually gets the victory and ends up bloodying uh, Fletcher post-match. We have Mariah May take out Viva Vaughn. And then Tony Storm comes out and tries to kill her. And then uh, Shibata end up beating uh, Brian Keith in a very entertaining match. Because Jericho was far away from the ring, but once he got close to the ring, we got the return of Hook. Which I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to get it. Uh, get it all in. I do find it interesting. I do find it exciting. The fact that we have all in and all out. Two weeks apart. The fact that we get the complete follow. Like, here's two ways to think of it. Any kind of feud that needs a follow up match. We can get it all out right away. Like we can get Swerve versus Hangman. At all out after Danielson and Swerve or work all in. We got two weeks to get that together. Any loose ends that need to be put together, we could do that. Any rematches that need to be made, they could be done there. I think one of the sleeper hits from 2023 
was that all out show from Chicago? If I do remember the main event of that one was Moxley and Orange. But the fact that they did push that show back a week actually helps a lot. And I hope they do that on a continual basis. I'm sure Mox will be back for vacation by all. I think that's what happens. He doesn't go to all in. Because realistically, he doesn't need to. And that's the thing. Like we were talking about the Lucha Brothers earlier as well, like that they're leaving. It sucks that they're leaving, but there are so many people able to step up. Yeah, he'll send Claudio, absolutely. Like, why not? And, of course, here's Cash in the ring to take all the heat from everybody. Now, by rule, and this is supposed to be the original AEW rules, I, I am assuming they probably changed four times. And the fact that they don't follow the rules that well really doesn't matter at this point. But double team time was supposed to be a hard 10, 10 count, not a five count. Because it was supposed to allow you time to actually do stuff in the ring rather than limit you. I remember them bringing that up in the early days of uh, of AEW. So, and we're just eight, 18 days away. Yeah, that that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting two weeks. Like two weeks from now, they're actually going to be doing Cardiff Wales for. Uh, for dynamite that week so that's going to be a lot of fun it, it's going to be a tape show obviously for us here in north america but i don't expect it to be full of too many surprises i i would think it would be very generic but a big grindy show to get get you set up for the the po the ppv on uh Sunday? I was about to say PLE, but that's the other guys. My biggest question I have for All In right now is what the set's going to look like. Because if I do remember properly, and I think I do, because people are starting to advertise draws for tickets and such. Uh, AEW has to keep a part of the set completely segregated and are not allowed to uh, not allowed to do anything with it because Taylor Swift's in Wembley before and after AEW. Like AEW's book the day, but T Swift's on either side of it. Could you imagine, folks? And here, here's a dream scenario. If you're Tony Khan, you find a way. I don't care if you have to pay her to show up, but get T Swift a box for for AEW All In. Could you imagine her being there? Like you've seen what happened to the Kansas City Chiefs after. After we ended up having, uh, you know, T Swift show up with uh, Jason Kelsey, right? Or Travis Kelsey, sorry. Like, those dynamics have actually gone through the roof. My God, I'm so glad Mordos is here. Like, hell, like, once again, like, don't get me wrong. Like, Penta and Phoenix, you know, Luchador is only missed. But look at Mortos. He's just stepping right in. 
in many ways, like I, I know he doesn't have the style that that uh, Penta has, but in terms of the movement, in terms of what he can do, he's building himself into someone that's worth of that spot. And of course, David and Ben gotta get back to their seats. Keep Nigel off commentary from... No, no, no. You put him on there. You put him on there. And when Mariah wins the title... It's pay-per-view, so you can allow to have a man have an orgasm on, on the uh, show. So... Because I'm pretty sure that's what'll end up happening if uh, Mariah wins the title off Tony... One thing I would love to have, if you want to generate some heat and you actually want to get Nigel McGuinness to wrestle one more match, you get Nigel out there screwing with Danielson in the main event in England. Where Danielson says he will no longer wrestle again if he loses the match. What if he gets get him... Uh, what if he costs him the title and... All of a sudden, this just creates one last match, which could be on quote-unquote Title Tuesday in October in Tacoma, Washington. Which, by the way, folks, uh, we are going to get a couple more of those uh, WWE versus AEW head-to-heads. The first one is going to be uh, Friday, September 6th, which uh, is the night before the All In Chicago show or the All Out Chicago show. Unfortunately, we will not have an episode of Collision here or a sidecast here because I will be at SmackDown in Edmonton here. So, But then the other one is going to be the aforementioned, uh, I believe it's Tuesday the 8th that uh, it's title Tuesday for AEW. So they're going to be running. They rerun the same night as NXT and NXT has just announced that they're looking to. Uh, Jay quick, just to clarify that a little bit. NXT is not going on the road permanently. They're going on the road for the first two shows. The first one is to get a, try and get a big number for the CW. So they're going to put them in Chicago which absolutely makes sense. The second one is going to be in St. Louis. It's going to feature Randy Orton on NXT, and it is going head-to-head -head with AEW Dynamite for that one week Dynamite moves to the Tuesday. So that's why that was announced that way. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, which if you don't pay five bucks to him and you're a wrestling fan that wants news, it's just a disservice to yourself more than anything. Sean Rossap reports that at this time, it looks like it's just going to be the two shows that are going to be uh, specifically for on the road for NXT. Unless they get some special shows coming up, like more of their takeovers are going to be... Like the takeovers, of course, are on the road, but also like some... Like right now, they just finished a Great American Bash. That probably will end up being on the road. Roosh show it up too quick there are those. And yeah, SRS is like the one... The one I usually follow the most, just because... He won't talk about a lot of BS... When Sap talks, he usually doesn't talk in uh, in speculation for the most part. If he doesn't know... Oh, there we go. Because what will happen if he doesn't have the answer, he'll say he doesn't have the answer. And that I can respect more than anybody else. Alvarez, Meltzer, all those guys, 
if they don't have an answer, they'll give you suspicion. Uh, you won't get that out of, uh, oh God. Mordo's ripping these guys apart. Nice power slam. Nice backdrop driver and now right into beach break. Meltzer's like a dead clock. He's right twice a day. That is such a dad joke. I love it, Jay Quick. I love it. Oh. Oh my goodness. So they're not going to do the Battle Royal. They're going to do the Casino Gauntlet. Folks, if you have not seen the Casino Gauntlet match, this match is pretty much the AEW staple match. Like they're brought your wit and knowledge tonight. Absolutely. Look at it. But if you haven't seen the Casino Gauntlet match, it pretty much is this, the uh, match that um, is making AEW. Like it, it, everybody asks for what match is specific to your promotion. That's what the Casino Gauntlet match has moved into that. You start with two people. More people come in at random intervals. It only goes until somebody gets a pinfall or submission. You could be the 15th in line, but if the 14th, if somebody gets pinned before your number is called, yeah, it's over and you, you're SOL. Well, there's a steel finisher. Have I ever seen one? Uh oh, here we go. If you don't see what's coming here. Yeah, so Roddy used it as a gimmick to get himself a shot at the uh, ROH title, right? Actually, no, he got a shot at the Undisputed or at the world title with that. And the Shatter Machine will finish that off. Even Orange hurt his hand it, not hard. <laughs> I, I love when Callus' response to anything is Chat. Tribalism is toxic. Amen, brother. Oh yeah, here we go. I called this. Oh yeah, that's right. I never watched Collision from this week. Gotta use it, attaboy dance. <laughs> Those local independent guys are really good, yeah. Break through the yeah, Daniels is there. No, 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 don't listen to him. So it looks like we're gonna end up with a three way match for the tag titles at all in, which doesn't really surprise me. The one thing I'd like to see in a way maybe have the acclaimed beat FTR. Just out of nowhere. That way the, the EVPs don't get pinned. <laughs> and I love that Caster's hat was taken by Dax and Orange is like, yeah, I'll take it. Just piss off. Oh, good. A replay that I... 
Oh, I saw the clip of this. This was pretty awesome. We could have a three-way for the trios titles too. Well, Christian doesn't care. He's the tag team. He's the trios champ. All right. Okay. All right, so we're going to get... Okay. Oh, Jay Quick. Uh, what he actually said when he uh, he pre remember he took all three titles when he won the won the championship. He actually presented the titles the next week after. She could defend these nuts. I knew that. Uh, when he handed out the titles as part of the presentation, he gave one to Nick and Wayne for being the prodigy, the the all-star, the great, the future of AEW. Then he gave the other title to Mama Wayne because she nurtured, she birthed the future, the prodigy, the, the upcoming future of AEW. Yeah, Kill Switch was about ready to explode, but the, by the time that happened, the, uh, the, uh, Bang Bang Gang came back out and it was sort of forgotten there for a moment. And now, now we're in this position here. So, but yeah, we're 90 minutes in. We got two matches to go here. We got the, uh, oh God, Camille in her hometown is about to destroy two. Yeah. Two enhancement talents. What's the over under on this match? Two minutes, three minutes. I'd almost give it 45 seconds. And then uh, Mercedes comes on the mic and says, uh, Hey, Brett, wish you could be here. Oh, yeah, you're suspended. Yeah, well, I, I, I could almost see that just getting the easy heat. That Brit pops up in a sting mask. Don't forget that. She uses that now. So as we're hitting the bottom of the hour here, just want to say thank you, everybody, for stopping in. Uh, just a reminder, after we're done here with the sidecast, we're going to have about a five-minute break here as I set up the Xbox. And we're going to get into our WWE 2K24 Slummer Slam PLE. Our main event is going to be Carmelo Hayes versus Gunter uh, in a cage for the uh, WWE Championship. We're also going to have JC or sorry, uh, Cora J taking on uh, Becky Lynch in a in a cage to finish off their feud for the women's championship. Plus, we'll have three other great matches on the card here, and from there we'll be able to talk wrestling, life, whatever you feel like. It's always a fun time when you hang out. So, yeah, after the break, we'll be back with uh, some WWE 2K24. So. But yeah, Britpop, no, it'll really be Sting? Nah. Sting showed up at Comic-Con last weekend, which was really cool. I was checking out a few of the uh, pictures that went down over the weekend. Yeah. 
Ah, I gotta show off hologram here. So, for those that have watched Collision, if I'm Brit, I don't tip my hand to Wembley with Hater. Absolutely not. You don't need her there yet. I have to ask you, everybody, uh, for those that have watched uh, Collision, what do you think of Hologram so far? I get it. He's had a couple great opponents to work with already, but... Um, like Gringo Loco and the Beast Mortos are the two I saw. I didn't get to see him last week. But uh, this guy out of uh, AAA, formerly known as Aramis, has been absolutely... Uh, I, I think there's... They're going the right way with it. And I'm glad that they squashed the uh, idea of uh, it being Prince Puma, per se. When are we getting Puma? I think we wait. Uh, Camille's going to take two minutes to finish this off. This is going to be hilarious. Trying to figure out the whole Guevara storyline with Dustin. <laughs> oh, my God. Folks, have you ever seen two wrestlers that just look like they're going to get their asses kicked and they know it already? We just saw that on the screen. Like, these two look up uh, utterly depressed. <laughs> yeah, the other one's like, no, 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 I'm out. Hope the pay is good. Absolutely. I don't know what the pay is for this stuff, but that's fine. Um, to check out the Guevara storyline with Dustin, you'll have to check out ROH because Sammy did actually have a promo explaining it. Just because you're p playing the job role doesn't mean you have to put it on your face. Here's the other thing. If you're going to do it, do it to the extreme. Because both of them, when they came in, they just looked like they were nervous as hell. Oh, God. Camille with a pump kick there. Duck my clothesline. I dare you. Shawn Michaels sell that shit. <laughs> and the Dominator. Oh, that was quick. So now we get Mercedes to chat for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, you're a hometown, but you're supposed to be a bad guy. Cheap pop. Nothing. If you would have said DMD, it would have got louder. Oh, my God. 
Oh God, this promo's going about as uh, about as well as. Ugh. I I'm just trying to think of horrible things that things have gone over. Oh, the facials of those two girls in this match. <laughs> Gotta love Tony. Mercedes put Brit over Larry B in there. Absolutely. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, there's your WWE reference. And this crowd is so over right now. I'm sure Mercedes didn't like that shot. Hey, is she wrong? That's the thing. Is she wrong? Like she, I'm not blaming her. Like I agree with what she did. Like I think she should have bailed when she did. But the, yeah, Mercedes probably said you got to... Yeah, like... This isn't CM Punk where they just throw shit out without talking to anybody about it. Which I still will believe that's the case and that's what's happening. Why are we showing the same promo twice? This is the same promo we saw in the opening segment, didn't we? All right, well... Yeah, well, it's still going to be a hell of a main event. I still think, I don't know if you use Jamie Hayter at Wembley. I, I think you can use it for a pop, but use her as a breaker up against uh, Camille. But you never know. You don't want Swerve to lose? I don't either. Like, I think there, I think there's a lot for Swerve to do here. But I also think Swerve can get his title back in uh, Washington. Because I know we were talking, like, I know we were talking about a Danielson, uh, a Danielson match against uh, Nigel McGuinness coming out of Tacoma. Why not have a rematch between Swerve and Danielson over at, in Washington, get, let uh, Swerve get that title win out there again. And then just go from there. Like we were talking about it during the break, which ironically is right now as well. But as we're getting into, uh, oh my God. Next Tuesday, they're doing indie wrestling as part of the Amazing Race. For any of those of you watching in Canada... Uh, that might be a rather, uh, you know, you might want to turn into a uh, dynamite a little early next week just to see how that goes. It, it's going to be a blast, but as per tradition here, as once, thank you everybody for coming back from the break here. 
as per tradition, right before our main event, uh, as we get going here, uh, just give you a little detail about what's going on here for the week for the channel. Uh, tomorrow during the day, probably closer to 11 Eastern or noon Eastern, we're going to get into Tears of the Kingdom. We'll see what, we'll see how things go. I might just begin the quest to go finish off uh, Ganondorf. There is a spot where we could stop and uh, basically hit the pit stop. So we might get all the way down there and then uh, might head back and try to gain everything we need to here. And then no stream Friday because I'll be at Top Talent Wrestling on Friday. Saturday, I'll let you guys know what it's all about as we're talking about AEW Collision here as uh, we're getting closer to all in. After Collision, we will have uh, week 11 of WWE 2K24 My GM Mode for Season 2. And then uh, Sunday, it looks like we're probably going to be bringing back the Backbreaker Fight Club. For those that aren't familiar, uh, we my, my first love of video games really is fighting games. So we'll be bringing back the Fight Club here and uh, still deciding whether we're going to do a little bit of Tekken, a little bit of Street Fighter, a little bit of Guilty Gear, or maybe something else. If you guys are following me on X, there might be a poll coming up soon. So let me know. Uh, let me know what you want to see here. And uh, yeah, we'll be probably checking out some fighting games on Sunday there. So and from there, we're looking at Tuesday for the next stream. Depending how tomorrow goes, we'll see how things are going to line up there, what we're going to do on Tuesday. Then, of course, back here on Wednesday for AEW Dynamite once again. But I don't know. I don't get a chance to say this enough here, guys and girls. Thank you for stopping by here. I appreciate it. If you like what you see here and you're not following already, please hit the follow button. We're always looking for more players here uh, to join us here in the players pit. If you really like what you see, consider subscribing. Uh, between now and the 19th, you do get three months of uh, Apple TV for free. If you do, all you have to do is subscribe. There's nothing extra involved. But other than that, thank you everybody i appreciate having you here as we get back into our main event maybe Please tell, oh, we're getting Claudio and uh, Okada. We're getting Claudio and Okada. Uh, we haven't done one of these yet. Uh, here we go. Ricky the Dragon supposed to be special enforcer at ringside. This is where... I can see Steamboat getting knocked out by Danielson. I honestly feel Danielson goes full heel tonight. There might be a possibility of that. I think one of the two of them go full heel. Either that or Hangman's going to lay him out. The next week he starts the show getting booed out of everything. So Ricky's going over to commentary. I thought he was going to be a special enforcer. Ricky was just there as a special enforcer. He lives out there. It's North Kakalaki where, you know, he was made famous. All right. Well, I think this is the perfect time of the night. <laughs> Well, that's how you start an ODQ match. That's my old school goat. Yeah, there you go. I'm assuming you're, meet, you're talking about Danielson, not... Uh, oh, you're talking about Ricky. Yes, I remember you meeting him at uh, PWA. So let me quickly throw this up here because I was waiting specially for this match. You guys are asking uh, 
There's my shirt of the day this week. It is Sagat versus Brian Danielson from uh, the AEW Street Fighter Collection. Yeah, I remember you got a chance to uh, to work with Steamboat there that, that night. You were having the blast there, so. It's about time we got sure of the day. Well, it I thought it'd be apropos to show it here because there's not too often the fact they get a chance to wear a red shirt on stream because every re wrestling shirt's black for some reason. I'm assuming it's because black is slimming. Lord knows I need as many of that as I can. I don't know if I can get a black enough shirt for that. You got to love the fact that, you know, there's a hurricane coming around and yet there's this packed house here. Oh, I thought that was Trevor Lee for a second at the top of the stairs. <laughs> oh, here we go. Jeff Jarrett special. It was but a small squall. I went to the gym in the, in the middle of it. Nice. Oh my god, that trash. Right on the shoulder, too. Ah, good old beer bottle on the head. Watch these two hug at the end of this match here. South Georgia got hammered though. Okay. Sucks for the people in Atlanta though. Oh, there we go. South of the border, down near Kojiko Lane. I found your dick with my boot. Gave it a little scoot. And you felt the pain all the way. Uh, all this singing. I know you guys come here for my delectable singing voice here. As I see the numbers drop big time. Oh my. That garbage can's going to be... <laughs> Shout out to Wake Forest. This is the biggest, biggest drop they've had since Chris Bosch was there. I think that's the last good basketball player that came out of Wake Forest. I I know Tim Duncan's from there, but that was earlier, so. Saw that little kid in the crowd just wanted to start throwing punches too. This is straight out of pit fight. Oh, go back to the Going back to the garbage can. This crowd is going insane there. I love it. Take it to the women's washroom. Is that where they're supposed to go at this point? They end up with the women's washroom and there's a whole bunch of goons there to be, beat, beat them up. Oh no, they're finally going back to the arena. Excellent. Good God, Jared took a concrete bomb. Hey, let, let's get all the joking aside here. The fact that Jared's in there with Danielson, probably because Jared's probably one of the most safe guys on the roster for Danielson to work with and put on a good match.
And the fact that it is North Carolina, you could use that Southern style wrestling. And most of the time the fans will eat it up, right? So. Full credit to these guys for what they're doing out here. And Holy crap. They just showed here, uh, Araldus Chapman of the uh, Pirates actually was clocked at 104, 104 mile per hour fastball. Eek. I'm not hitting that. That would be lucky just to get the hell out of the way. Jarrett's underrated. Absolutely, he is. Problem is, like in the ring, he's very serviceable. He's one. He's he's a great wrestler. But whenever you start getting involved in the political game, you're always going to find a way to knock yourself down a few levels. Hell, look at the guy that for years was considered the greatest of all time. Throughout the 80s, there was one man. As long as you were, well, as long as you weren't really studying wrestling, because Flair would have been that, but... As soon as he started getting involved in politics, I understand the w, that uh, the NWO was a little more of a, a phenomenon that grew bigger there, but at the same time, you started to see the more that it looked like Hogan was getting involved in the booking, it sort of do dove things down, right? He's part of that old Southern wrestling community, of course, plays, but absolutely, like, I'm not going to fault him for what he did. Because in many respects, like when you're in the smaller organizations, you're going to have to, you're going to have to play that game or you're never going to get in the game. But I just know for a fact that, you know, setting up your own company, thanks to your dad's money, never turns out to be a good thing. We've had that locally here, and at best, the one promotion that's done that out here has not been able to get above third. That's AEW, though. Eh, fair enough. It is daddy's money that got him the promotion, but the kid's not a wrestler. That's the... I love Jared. He's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're going to go for 10? No, let's go for 40. We only got about five more minutes left in this unless they decide to go overtime again. Jared didn't get down enough for Danielson there. You can see him get clipped there. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like it might be an ongoing basis where AEW is going to book their, uh, their their collision shows away from the PLEs because you could see the uh, tickets going on sale. The October 3rd show uh, for collision that's being taped there, that's for October 5th. That's the night of bad blood in Atlanta. So I expect that to be an afternoon show as well. I just think AEW is completely in a no-win situation, no matter what they do there, because AEW is gonna or AEW is gonna get a counter program no matter what. And then when they get the horrible numbers, everybody just says, "Well, you have the horrible numbers because you're in a new spot." But if they're in the regular spot, they get horrible numbers on a Saturday during a pay-per-view so too bad they couldn't do like uh 
sort of like a halftime heat kind of thing. And, and it's a weird concept. I, I get it, but hear me out here. WWE's P PLEs, like we had what? Maybe 90 minutes of wrestling in, in four hours. Could you have AEW counter program and have their matches start right after, like, even if you did it on YouTube, have your matches end at start right when their matches end. So automatically right after the match, you're flipping over to uh, a live match somewhere. It would never work because the crowd would have to sit there because there is no way that they get permission to show the WWE show, right? But that would be like an ultimate pipe dream. Just have matches in between the sh in between their matches. I'm surprised an indie promotion hasn't done that yet. Like have their matches in between, like maybe a five or ten minute match in between. You could charge people to come watch your show and then just get the extra bit for watching the PLE, right? I wouldn't say a broken leg, but... Oh, here we go. I've seen this before. Got, gotta love the spider. I didn't know it was a spider suplex till today. And this crowd's finally waking up. They're still bored from the Monet promo earlier. Danielson Charlie it looks almost like he's looking for a clock somewhere. Oh, and this is how you do it. You want to talk about a bad knee? This is the way to fix that up. Who's bleeding right now? Oh, wow. Have you ever seen this? That's one way to break out of a figure four. That's for damn sure. Yeah, for the extra pressure there, it makes sense. Oh, went for the stroke. Now he got it. No, he's going for the sharpshooter this time. Um, unfortunately, this is what we usually call the sharpshitter. Because what it looks like the way it does right now. They call that instantly the label lock right off the bat. There's no DQ, so the ropes ain't going to help. This could very well be the reason they end it. Nope. Oh, good old fashioned left hand. You got to love that. Live round Jones, attaboy, Taz. So yeah, we're getting overtime here tonight, folks. So I hope the people people that have this on PVR, they've just accepted the fact that they have to add an extra 15 minutes to their their tapings.
Either the chair that he got hit with, that he set up himself. Makes sense. Bucycle knee with a... All right, there you go. That's it. It's got to be it. Finisher with a chair. Great match. Like... You'd expect a very basic match like that, right? Like... And I say basic for a no DQ match, of course, right? It's a great test for Danielson to get towards, like going towards uh, the all in all in show against Strickland. Like, we haven't seen Danielson work in a while, and great. Zodiac, you got it perfectly. A great, simple match. Did what it needed to do. It established Danielson as ready to take it to the next level. It showed Jared putting on a great performance. We're probably going to get the respect spot, or we're going to get Hangman decapitating uh, Steamboat here. Oh, my God. A typical main event WWE style match. Yeah, you know what? It, I, I'll give you that. One last step before we get off of uh, Dynamite tonight, before we get to the wrap-up. Just to remind your folks, this Friday, AEW Rampage will now officially last longer than WCW Thunder in terms of number of episodes. Just remember that. Well, here comes Swerve. Uh, it's too late. We're not doing no dance. He shaved it out here earlier. All right, Swerve, what do you got to say? Let's go. And Jared just books it. Oh, oh, dirty, dirty. barely get up into the ring. He said champions here. Um, Danielson's been a champion. At least on the same level that Steamboat and Jared have been because they sure as hell haven't been champions at AEW. Unless you want to call uh, Jared, technically, Jared is the Texas Deathmatch champion. All right, nice way to. F
That is going to be a fun match. That's going to be fun. So next week, just feel the crowd wasn't, yeah, like, respectfully, I know that, uh, I, I do have a feeling that Monet was, you know, I, I was joking about Monet getting no pop, but yeah, I think it's, it is the miking of the crowd, and they still haven't figured that out completely yet, which makes, you know, it makes sense as to why it's not the greatest answer as to why, so as we fade to black here on the show. Another great show here by AEW and just from the start of the show where you had MJF and Kyle Fletcher and the advancement of that story to the two women's segments there where Mariah May and uh, Tony Storm got a chance to attempt to murder each other again to Mercedes and... Uh, Camille doing her two-on-one gimmick. Uh, hearing that Britt's going to be coming back next week. Um, Orange Cassie getting the hometown pop with FTR. Then that main event, the no DQ match, which, like Zodiac, I think you timed it up perfectly there. A typical main event WWE-style match, and that's what it felt like. It felt like what we were doing on, uh, like, don't get me wrong, it didn't feel like what happened this week on Raw. That's a whole different ball of wax. But for a typical Raw or SmackDown, it just feels... It feels like it could be on par with that kind of match. So I I don't think they're doing anything to hurt themselves going into All In. Oh, and by the way, we're it looks like we're going to end up getting Jericho and uh, Hook. So maybe we can end this Tree of Jericho thing going on, but... I digress to that point. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen here. We're only 18 days away, and we got a ton of people that are going to be lining up here and will be joining me for our our AEW sidecast here of All In from Wembley. So it's going to be a ton of fun, and I'm going to be glad that all of us are going to be here to enjoy it. And make sure you join us for a Sunday afternoon of fun wrestling. So... But yeah, uh, overall, I just think it's just a great, a great show tonight, and that's what what we can expect from all these. So.